Welcome back to another homebrew recipe showcase. Today I'm going to be showing you guys pretty pineapple pale. Say that three times fast without spitting all over yourself. Now this is my spin on the typical classical American style pale ale, of course with a little bit of pineapple added, but don't get it twisted. This ain't no fruit smoothie. As the American craft beer revolution started to gain momentum in the late 70s and the early 80s, it was only natural that we were going to produce what is now known as the American Pale Ale. Um, we took from our forefathers, like we have done many, many times, and we sort of stole the pale ale from overseas and made it our own. Our version has a higher alcohol by volume, as well as more hops, more malt. This traditional style strikes a great balance for many drinkers because it has a hearty malt backbone, sometimes even a little bit sweet, but it's well balanced by a relatively high bitterness from hop content, as well as a great hop character, usually through methods like dry hopping or late hopping in the boil or the kettle. Now, this is going to be a relatively short video, but I'm going to share with you guys how I make this particular example, and you guys can make it for yourself or just watch me drink it or whatever you guys do with these videos. First, I'll talk a little bit about this beer and how I came about this recipe. The pineapple pale ale was actually one of the first recipes that I ever made as a home brewer uh, when I started formulating my own recipes, as opposed to just brewing from kits. Now, my first recipe was actually extract based because I was still brewing with malt extract at the time, but I have since then reformulated my entire operation into all grain. And so my most recent recipe is an all grain recipe. And um, I've brewed this beer multiple times and it comes out good every time. I really do think that it still has some tweaking to do. I think maybe my malt bill is a little bit overcomplicated, but it is a little bit more traditional and based on the original recipe of the American Pale Ale. So there's a little bit of darker caramel malts that give it kind of this darker, almost orange color, maybe a little bit copper-like. Um, if you know the classic pale ales like our overlords in Chico, California provide over at Sierra Nevada, you'll know that this color is not abnormal, but um, really the end goal for me personally is a beer with bursting bright hop aromas, um, a little bit of pineapple character both on the aroma and on the palate, as well as a, a you know a brilliant clarity, kind of a light copper color, maybe even a little bit lighter than that, and good head retention. So this beer really checks all those boxes for me. Now without further ado, let's go ahead and run through the recipe. Now the grain bill for this is complicated and maybe even a little bit overly complicated for what you're getting but again I kind of based it off of more traditional recipes so let me run through this real quick and you guys can take what you will from it um, but for a five gallon batch I did use 10 pounds of two row base malt eight ounces of caramel 20 uh, four ounces of caramel 60 two pounds of Vienna malt and about four ounces of dextrose in the boil kettle now you may be like well okay you have caramel 20 and caramel 60 in such small amounts really all that I'm doing with those is getting it to the color that I desire I don't know how much caramel character those add. Um, yes, I do add, you know, about 15% Vienna malt just to give it a little bit more malt sweetness, kind of a, a more hearty malt backbone. That's totally optional, totally optional. These pale ales can be as simple or as complicated as you want them to be. In my opinion, that's kind of the beauty of the style is it's almost totally customizable. In terms of process, this is a very straightforward beer. I mashed this for 60 minutes at about 152 degrees. I want it to be well attenuated and relatively dry. This particular recipe started for me at about 10.55 original gravity and ended at 10.09, giving me an alcohol by volume of roughly six or 6.2%, depending on the equation that you use. So it's not exactly a beer that you would uh, drink four or five of, you know, it's not a session beer necessarily, but I think that six or six and a half percent alcohol by volume range is really nice for the American Pale Ale. Before I get into fermentation and adding your fruit flavorings, let's talk about the hops. Now, the American Pale Ale, being kind of colloquially known as the little brother to the India Pale Ale or the IPA, um, this is a hoppy beer and it is relatively bitter. My bittering addition is relatively small. I use a half an ounce of Cascade for the full 60 minutes. I then added one ounce of Amarillo hops to boil for 15 minutes and two ounces of Citra that I whirlpooled at about 170 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. In terms of IBUs, I normally aim for in between 40 and 50. I do add pineapple to mine, so that adds both a little bit of acidity and a little bit of fruit character. So it's not gonna be quite as overwhelmingly bitter, um, but I think about 40 to 50 IBUs is generally good. Keeping in mind that with those crystal malts, um, you know, we get a little bit of, of caramel-like sweetness or um, you know, a little bit of grain or toffee-like sweetness. So we do get a, a, you know, a good malt backbone to balance out that bitterness, even if you're shooting for a little bit higher. As far as my dry hopping procedure for this beer, it's actually incredibly simple. A lot of you know that um, oftentimes I do like to dry hop my beers cold. So I cold crashed this down to 36 degrees and then dry hopped for three days with two ounces each of Citra and Amarillo. Now it's actually a pretty big dry hop addition. You know, four ounces uh, in a five gallon batch is up there with what you would expect with an IPA recipe. 
Um, I can't really speak to the logistics of that. I mean, I call it a pale ale, so that's what it is. I, I don't know, man. I should note that I have also brewed this beer as a Citra-only beer with no Amarillo. Um, I, I, I bittered, flavored, and dry hopped all with Citra hops, and it was wonderful. I can't recommend that enough. Basically, you would just take everything that I mentioned and swap Amarillo for extra Citra, and you get a wonderful character from it. Now let's talk about water very briefly. Um, I'm just gonna touch on what kind of water profile you are aiming for for this beer. Um, you do actually want a relatively high sulfate to chloride ratio for this because you want this beer to have a nice crisp biting bitterness uh, akin to you know many famous pale ale examples. So I ended up shooting for about 100 parts per million of sulfate and about 50 parts per million of chloride. So you can really tweak that however you'd like, but the two to one sulfate to chloride ratio kind of contributes to overall a more bitter, hop forward, lighter colored beer, as opposed to uh, like a New England style IPA, which you would want to have basically the opposite. Now, as far as yeast choice, I use the yeast that I use all the time, which was Lalamon's Dry Voskovaik yeast. Um, this stuff's awesome. I can't recommend it enough. I'm not going to really talk about it here because I've talked about it so much in other videos and I want you to watch my other videos, sir and or ma'am. Unless you have already, in which case just freaking kick back, man, drink a beer, I don't know. But I ferment this about 95 degrees with my Lalamon Voskvayek yeast, and it's usually turned around in, with the fruit and dry hop additions, usually about 10 days. It's a very quick turnaround, it's a very quick and clean fermentation, and as you can see, it's relatively clear. I will say that this was canned quite a while ago, so it's done some conditioning since then, but it is a very pretty beer to look at, hence the freaking name. Let's talk about how we add the fruit. This beer is simple in almost every way, including the addition of fruit. Now, I do this just about as basic as you possibly can. No fancy aseptic purees, nothing like that. What I do is I go to the store, go to the grocery store. Are you listening? Hey, hey, I'm, t I'm trying to tell you how I, so I go to the grocery store, right? And I grab three cans of frozen pineapple juice concentrate. You can use whatever brand, it doesn't matter. Put up a picture on the screen of the stuff that I use, but they, they just are those frozen cans of juice concentrate. Uh, they're usually 12 ounces. So I went ahead and grabbed three of those and then defrosted them in the microwave very briefly just to get them into sort of a, a liquid format. And then I just dumped them into my fermenter after primary fermentation has slowed. So after I reached my uh, final gravity of 10.09, I went ahead and just dumped those three cans in and let it re ferment until it was again down to 1009. So I'm not back sweetening this beer with pineapple or anything like that. I'm letting it ferment out all the way, but it does pull some nice pineapple character, especially in the aroma. You get um, quite a bit of pineapple in the nose. You also get like a very distinct acidity though. So I will warn you, you will get a little bit of an acidic bite doing it this way. Um, if that doesn't bother you, then more power to you. You have, you know, a beer, it's not sour, but it does have a little bit of acidity from that amount of pineapple juice concentrate. So something to be aware of. As far as finding the beer, uh, when you use something like pineapple juice, you can have a pectin haze. Pectin is a structural acidic heteropolysaccharide. <laughs> which is contained basically in the cell walls of many different kinds of fruits. Basically, what it does to your beer is it can cause a haze, like a very stable haze that doesn't really drop out with cold crashing. Um, in order to make this go away, I use a little bit of pectic enzyme. I think I used two teaspoons in this batch. And I just did this after the pineapple had fermented out all the way and it was at my final gravity, um, after which I went ahead and cold crashed it at 36 degrees. I also did find this beer with gelatin in order to get it to the clarity that it is at now. That being said, I have uh, done this beer without finding with it anything, no gelatin, nothing like that. I did didn't even cold crash it, I don't think, in the fermenter. Um, instead, I just bottled it and I bottle conditioned the beer at that point and I let it sit for, uh, I wanna say about a month it took to clear up all the way and all the pineapple juice to kind of drop out of suspension. That's really it. Like I said, relatively short video, um, just another homebrew recipe showcase for you guys. Let me know if you're interested in brewing anything like this or if you have any questions about my recipe. Again, I think this could be simplified a lot and the next time I brew this, it will be a lot simpler uh, than I did it last time just because I, I think that I could kind of cut a few corners and still make a beer that's just as good. I also am open to experimenting with different ways of pineapple flavoring. I haven't found a good extract um, that I like in terms of pineapple flavoring specifically. I've used a few and all of them get kind of a, a candy-like pineapple flavor, which I don't like so much for this beer specifically. But that being said, it's a great American pale ale. Like I said, it's got a little bit of acidity, a little bit of pineapple on the nose and uh, on the palate. It's delicious. I like drinking it. I usually always have cans of this or bottles of this around. It's one of the few core beers that I have sort of rotating through my system pretty consistently. As always, you can view the full recipe in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm actually literally brewing another beer right now. I have a mash. You can kind of see it even off camera. Literally, that's, that's my kettle wrapped in a sleeping bag and my mash was done like 20 minutes ago. Not that that hurts anything, but I'm, I'm gonna get back to brewing. I'm multitasking, what can I say? I'm a multitasker. All right, see you later.